So hi, everybody. This is the first time we're trying the, uh, the weekly, rather than a weekly throwdown, which we typically do on Friday nights, we're, we're um, trying a new thing out called a weekly news roundup that's about both Audi news that's going on this week and also uh, events that are coming up uh, here quickly in the event schedule. Before we get into the news, it's worth announcing we're going to take this Friday off. We'll be returning to our regular scheduled programming the following week uh, after the 4th of July. So we hope you all have a, a safe uh, and enjoyable 4th of July. And why don't we jump into the biggest news of the week, which is a facelifted Audi Q5. So this and, is ba basically B9 and a half, yeah? And, yeah. and, and uh, they're introducing a new color for this one, as you can see here, which is distant green. What we expect out of this is much the same as before. What you're seeing here is a European market, basically diesel. So we, it's not the exact spec that we would get. We'll probably get this color and maybe get these wheels. Um, not sure if this is the S line or not, but basically much like the, the rest of the B9 range has seen a, an updating, a midlife cycle freshening. We're going to see that as well with Q5, which is the last to get it. Uh, so expect it mainly to be cosmetic, but just like the, if you were to go to the dealer today and try driving a new facelift, did a 4A5 or their derivatives, uh, this will have the same uh, changes to the interior with the touchscreen, um, wireless CarPlay, uh, that sort of thing. And then just some, some subtle uh, changes. Obviously, the big change is the, uh, on the center console there because of the touchscreen, so you lose the touchpad. It looks better than the, the earlier B9 version. The new grill looks great. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I agree. This is a, I really like this version of the Q5. Yeah, those, uh, those wheels are carryover in design from the Q3. I believe they launched on that. Some really trick looking taillights. Uh, just just a, a cool new vehicle. Why don't we go live in the field to uh, Aaron Anel from, from APR. Oh, he's sideways. Aaron, you're sideways. <laughs> hey, Aaron. He's connecting to your audience. What's up, guys? Hey, man. Turn up the volume here. See if I can. There you go. Good job. So, what do you so, have for us today? I have an Audi RS6 here that we imported from Germany. You guys imported this thing ahead of time because Americans won't have cars until September. Yeah, we started the process last year. It was probably around, uh, I guess, December. And you know, it takes a little while to make sure that we have all the paperwork and that we can actually drive the car on the road, that it's legal, EPA, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, coronavirus hit and it really delayed everything. So it took us about six months longer to get it here. But uh, the car is awesome. I mean, it's fully decked out with all the options. And in Germany, you can really spec this thing out. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like specking out a Porsche here where it gets really overwhelming with the amount of options that you have. <laughs> so we went, we went ahead and added as much as we could. And kind of did it in a configuration without a crazy color because obviously we want to make sure this thing can sell after we're done with it. So we're going to have it here for about a year and then we'll uh, ship it back. So here we go. White looks so good on that car. Oh yeah. It's have just, you had a chance to drive it yet, Aaron? I mean, I've driven it in the parking lot <laughs> and that's it. So far we've already, on day one, we started tearing it apart Did and getting into it. So pretty nice oh, cool. factory um i forget what the exact size of it is but it's it's about um i mean it's pretty large already from the factory so making it much larger might be a little difficult but i think we can make the car sound pretty aggressive that's such a good looking car you got you got to see the brakes on this thing because they're they're just massive you can't really tell in this picture but uh the factory wheels are 22s i believe aren't they yeah these are 22s and I mean, they're just, they're just absolutely humongous. I mean, I don't really have small hands or anything, but you can see it's, it's, it's humongous. <laughs> I mean, even the back brakes are like bigger than most people's front brakes. So look at that. I mean, that's like, I think that's about the same size as like a golf R brake setup and they're in the rear. The keys are in it, hit it so you can see the light sequence on the headlights. We have the, uh, the I guess like the LED matrix and the laser headlights. There's no warnings here. There's no uh, orange markers or anything. So it's kind of cool. There you go. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow, that's really good looking. Yeah. And the headlights are just, I've used the headlights on the uh, S7 with lasers and it's awesome at high time. Does this, uh, this car I'd imagine has matrix beam then you guys went ahead and 
Yeah, it's got it's got all the options. It's got that that big blue light in there and everything, and oh, it's so cool. Has anybody taken it out at night yet to see the kind of dynamic? No, no. So far, the car has been it's been in the shop. I just rolled it out here into the uh, in the lobby, but it's been in the shop torn apart because um, we've been working on the intake system, and they've been working on the ECU. Uh, basically, on the ECU side, we can already get into it and start programming, but we're finding all the maps and doing kind of like the preliminary work before we start tuning the car. Mm. Any any plans to take this thing out to any events anytime soon? I know there aren't many events yeah, going so on. Yeah, so we're actually going to take it to Caffeine and Octane this weekend. Oh, okay. In, uh, so that'll be up in Atlanta, Georgia. And then, I mean, it just depends on what kind of events are are scheduled for this year. Right now, October 3rd is the APR barbecue, you know. Okay. Assuming that everything is, every, assume as everything is, is good around that time, we'll, we'll, we plan to have it going on. And actually, it will also be in attendance at the Quattro de Mayo event that Audi Club Georgia is doing in August. Oh, awesome. great. And, and Caffeine so and Octane is this weekend in Atlanta. Sorry. Perimeter Mall. Perimeter Mall. Perimeter Mall. Okay. So let Let's, me show you some of the cool stuff going on here. First off, check out the privacy, privacy glass that you get on these cars. So they're, I mean, it's like limo tent. You can't see through it. Huh. I think that's basically a feature for the rest of the world. And they even have the, uh, you know, like, remember the old Cadillac doors that, you know, if you were kind of lazy to shut your door, it would shut itself. Right. Well, it, it, it does all that, too, here. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's sort of soft close or whatever they call it. Yeah. Let me show you inside this. Oh, look at that screen. So the screens, they have this cool RS mode right here. So they have two different RS modes. And when you push it, um, I guess when you're in RS2 mode, it basically, so you can see down here, RS2, uh, it just puts everything in like the most aggressive settings. As far as like ESP, you can turn all that off. What's that? It just makes it so it's easier to get into like, you know, basically the fastest settings you want to yeah. have on the track, like very quickly without having to fumble through tons of buttons. It's kind of um, like a modern take on the old Digidash too, right? Like those old kind of like that, that, that. Yeah, this was, I, I thought this was a little, uh, this was pretty different, but it did remind me kind of like something I'd seen in the eighties or early nineties. Yeah. <laughs> they have, uh, let me see if I can cycle through the different views here. I mean, most of it's probably very similar to like an S7, but, uh, yeah, this is the most aggressive one. That's rad. Yeah. So perimeter mall. I mean, that's big news for anybody who's who happens to catch this. If you if you go out to Caffeine and Octane this weekend in Atlanta at the perimeter mall on Saturday, Sunday. this car Sunday Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday sorry. Uh, so sorry. Sunday it it will be. Are, is APR going to have a uh, presence there? Or should they just look forward to somebody driving in, kind of on the down low? Oh, How's that going to work? We will have an awesome booth there. You guys will be able to see this car as well as a couple other cars we'll have on display. So you cannot miss us. The engine on this thing too. I know a lot of people want to see that. Um, this is the yeah, European yeah. model. So we have the, uh, we have the OPF in the back here, which I can't see it here, but it's uh, basically like the bigger catalyst that they're now offering in Europe. Um, so now we don't, any, do we any other that? questions on the car, you know, let me know, but no, we don't get those in the U S. Okay. We well, sign one, off, one person guess. says, "Don't let Talia drive it." Oh yeah, no! Not, yeah, she's not allowed to drive it. <laughs> that's not a question. Um, <laughs> um, have, you, have you guys had any customers rolling in RSQ8s yet? We know those are showing up at dealers in the U.S. now. I have a bunch of people that want to get software from us, um, and we have not started tuning that car yet. But okay. I'm pretty excited to do it. Yeah, it's a whole new world, right? A lot of new. Products. I know. All I mean, all these new four liters and three liters and two point nine liters are awesome. If you guys want to see this cool little thing in the trunk here, now they have these nice little uh, guide tracks, and you get these little nunchucks that slide in there and make, uh, you know, adding everything nice and nice and neat. I mean, the whole car, just everything about it, is just so cool. Yeah, the German market details too. I suspect we don't we don't get trunk organizers like that. Is my guess, but um. Yeah. You even get your uh, you get your yellow jacket if you're in Europe. So this is what everybody's, <laughs> this is what everybody's protesting in because they're they're required to have it in the car whenever you're you know changing so tire or doing something. So, so it's so great. yeah, it's so cool. I don't know if if uh, if it breaks any Alabama laws. Is Alabama have laws? I don't even know. But um, uh, we not many. 
Yeah. So the request was, could you start it up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You want to start it real quick? Oh, it's from this. Now, the only thing that's kind of disappointing is from the factory, they limit the uh, the standing rev limiter to about 4,000. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. So it's kind of quiet when you rev it up. That is so quiet after you start it. Is that something you guys will be removing, Aaron? That I don't step over here just so I can hear you again. Is, <laughs> is that something you'll be removing that rev limiter so that people can yeah, properly no, we'll, rev their cars? Yeah, we'll we'll raise it up. We'll raise it up so you can rev it much higher and you know sound much better. And a little trick, if you don't know this, if you are in if you start rolling the car and you throw it in neutral and you're over a certain mile an hour, then you can rev it up to whatever you want. Oh, interesting wow. trick. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been, that's kind of been a trick for, I mean, I guess about the past 10 years since like the B8 came out, that was like the way to get around that just on a stock car. No. Well guys, that, that's all the questions we have. I really appreciate your time today and, and letting us schedule this with you. And I wish I could make it to Atlanta to see that thing in person, but, um, sometime soon definitely okay well cool thank you very much thanks thank guys y'all have a happy fourth thanks aaron thanks telly all right have a good one right, bye, bye bye we can move on a while to uh something that popped up it's not even on the blog yet audi has released the first photos of the e-tron s so uh e-tron s had been shown before with some kind of their kind of bespoke e-tron camo for their test mules but these are our full production shots that navara blue long roof version looks if i may say amazing <laughs> but um really beefy looking i, I got you know i have an e-tron lowered with 22 so some respect but it doesn't look that beefy for some reason no, it it's doesn't <laughs> really really a good looking car and um the 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 point isn't just looks on these e-tron s models they have a third motor in the back which means more horsepower uh more torque they can utilize um just like the sport differential and some of the other audis they can utilize that second motor because they're independent and can drive each wheel you can overdrive that outer rear wheel and induce a little bit of oversteer so if you happen to google i know our our channel on youtube has some of the footage of Stig Blomquist uh, taking, or I think he, it was either Stig or it was um, Matisse Ekstrom, but one of the two, both of them were driving it. One of them was drifting it pretty heavily. So should be a ton of fun. I don't know what that will do for range on these cars, right? <laughs> like if you're blowing it all out and drifting, uh, don't expect to be, you know, the range king, but, or queen. But regardless, uh, it, it looks incredible. It's going to get a lot of attention. It's the first electric, I believe, in the market that will have a third motor um, for use in this sort of all-wheel drive system. So Tesla has tested their Plaid system, I believe is what it's called on the Nürburgring and such, but they haven't actually launched it in, into the market yet. So it looks like Audi will be first to market with that sort of configuration. Not even the Porsche Taycan has this, right? So this is, this is uh, interesting that Audi will take that stab at this first. Uh, we'll, we'll post more on the blog on that uh, probably later this afternoon. So watch for it. We'll get those photos and everything probably on the e-tron connect blog and then share over to all the platforms. What next is the, um, you know, just cruising around the web the other day and uh, happened to see this really interesting looking render uh, from, it's the Audi GT concept render by Jordan Gendler, I believe that how you pronounce his last name. He's actually a Jaguar uh, Land Rover designer. Uh, but he, he had mentioned before in an interview that he loves everything from Audi from the early 2000s. Um, so this one was inspired by the Mark I TT uh, and also the Rosemeyer concept. It's, uh, it, as you can see, it's, well, it's kind of tough to see, but it is actually a five-door uh, GT with Susan. Su huh? Yeah. Um, I think in that, that photo that you showed uh, just right before this one, you could kind of see the line um, uh, starting at the, well, not really a pillar, but right above the rear, rear wheel. Uh, so it's got a panoramic sunroof, as you can see, um, uh, slattered in carbon fiber. Um, and he's got, you know, not only did, did this, but he thought, what, what, what would happen if they made a GT version, uh, I'm sorry, a DTM version 
I'm just going to see here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I don't think he needs the rally lights for the DTM, but I love the rally lights personally. <laughs> well, rally lights on anything look great. Right. Uh, I mean, and as do the turbo fans. That's what I great. <laughs> So like I said, um, uh, even though he's not an Audi designer, uh, he obviously can, you know, he loves beauty. And his uh, Instagram, let's see if I can remember his, I think it's just Jordan Gendler, G-E-N-D-L-E-R, um, one word uh, on Instagram. And you can see he's got other uh, designs of this, other photos that he's done of this. And then obviously uh, all his other designs of everything but uh, yeah, I really like it. I will say it seems to be more matched to Audi design language, probably from like the, um, like you mentioned, the Rosemeyer era, the early TT era. It's a little more rounded, a little more like um, subtle, a little more Bauhaus uh, simple yeah. than today's today's Audi language is sort of like there's a lot going on. So I'm glad you mentioned Bauhaus. I was trying to remember the, um, the yeah. design, but definitely so. These wheels are interesting too. They're almost like a an interesting take on the simple Avis wheels that were like on the, you know, what the, the well the Avis concept and then the the original S8 and then the S4 and the, like variations of this spoke pattern, the original TT, um, but it's kind of its own unique take. That's pretty rad. So beyond that, I believe what we are uh, looking at about sales, yeah. sales, the QT sales. Um, obviously, I don't think it goes without saying, uh, with the pandemic happening, uh, sales fell 35%, as you can see, to 34,843 units. Everybody's sales are down. I think there is a, um, this is for the quarter. So this is what, uh, it, yeah, the April, whole quarter, they're, April, they're, May, June. I mean, it's in the heart of COVID, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. so. It is what it is. I, I would have expected it actually to be worse than 30. Yeah, Audi America and Volkswagen America uh, have gone to the quarterly reporting as opposed to monthly. Um, so yeah, the, like George said, this is this is for the whole uh, second quarter of the year. Moving on to our next story. Uh, since we didn't do uh, find of the day, or we're not doing <laughs> find of the day this week, shall we do a found of the day? A found of the day, and it's actually on the road on the day. Uh, yeah. Through. Yeah. So we talked in our, when we, when we kind of changed up find of the day last week to sort of test this formula of doing news and events. Uh, and then you and I talked about some boondoggles that we're in the middle of. We're not ready to give any sort of updates on your boondoggle yet, but we can give a bo an update on mine, which is uh, a C1 coupe S, uh, which was kind of the fastback coupe of the uh, C1 era. It was, back then kind of four cylinder and not terribly it was very pretty but not very fast um <laughs> i found this car on the classic audi group in uh on facebook posted by the guy's friend the guy's a, a very nice gentleman in sweden who um who had the car he did not build it himself as you can see there it's on the truck which is why i'm sharing it because as of yesterday <laughs> the money arrived in his account in sweden and the truck arrived at his house and it went onto the truck. So it's now being, uh, it's probably, well, it's probably made its way to Holland, which is where it's going to sit. I'm working with Jamie Orr from Orchid Euro, who's helping me import this. He's helped a lot of us who are afflicted with this uh, disease of catching cars. Uh, in Anyway, uh, Jamie has, I think, got four or five cars that are coming across in this shipment and they're all kind of centering into Holland and then they're going to move to Port of Emden in Germany and they're going to come across to Rhode Island. Uh, should be here in a couple weeks. So I'm really excited about this. The trick to this car is that it is not a four cylinder. It is, no. it's got a 32 valve V8 from the Audi, the early Audi V8. So uh, an early V8, but thus easier to install. Very clean engine bay uh, as well. It's somewhat simple, but um, it's got, it's a bit of a Frankenstein. It's got that engine. It's got an 01E six speed transmission. It is Quattro. These cars were not Quattro new. So that's kind of neat. And um, the interior is a mix of, I believe, C4, uh, A6, uh, or 100, not sure which yet. We'll learn when it gets here. But dashboard, <laughs> you can see that kind of uh, sport uh, airbag steering wheel. Who knows if the airbag's hooked up? Probably not, is my guess. But um, but was was uh, uh, matched that era of dashboard. And then the seats, I'm told, are B6. So we'll see. Uh, <laughs> the, see, see the, if this is a part spin special, if ever there were one. But so cool. It's like a German Eleanor. Love the green. I think it's an original color. I'm going to be learning that as we go. Um, 
but hopefully we'll be seeing this car. I'll probably make some changes. I'm, you know, I, that's kind of the reason well, I bought it. it. It is you, George, so you will make some changes on yeah. it. Yeah. I love the Steelies. I may swap the Steelies out and do something a little more uh, late 60s, early 70s kind of period correct. May change the dash. We'll see what we're all capable of doing. And it may need some fixes. I don't know. Usually what I'm here of sweet Sweden is that it's such a wonderful place in the winter because people hole up all winter and build cars. And this is probably where this car came from. Then it, that a lot of us were not aware of this car before I popped up on my radar in that group. Uh, maybe uh, it's, it's, you know, I'm amazed it was kept that much of a secret, but, but um, we're learning more about it now, certainly. And like, yeah, this was posted by the guy who bought this car uh, from the guy who built it, took it by a friend's house. The friend was an Audi uh, enthusiast. The owner was is a car enthusiast, but not necessarily an Audi enthusiast. So his Audi enthusiast friend went crazy, took some pictures, posted it to this classic Audi group and uh, mentioned kind of on the side, yeah, he might be interested in selling it. And so I immediately reached out because it looks amazing and it's one of a kind. Um, and as it turns out, he was looking to sell it and it was a pretty fair price. So we started talking and a couple days later, here it is on a truck. So I, I cannot wait for this thing to show. You wouldn't have to have a video of, of it, would you? Uh, I don't have one queued, but okay. if you check out the, uh, the, the post about this car on Facebook, it keeps bumping up to the top because I think at this point we're nearly 400 likes on it just, and it was just posted this morning. Um, there are two videos in there. There's one in the initial group of photos that I uploaded. And then if you look further down uh, in the comments, I posted a second one. These are not my videos. These are the videos of the Audi enthusiast friend who had posted it to the classic Audi group. So, um, right. I mean, you have to look at the one when some guy's standing on a bridge on an overpass and it goes underneath them and off into the distance, you're going to look that <laughs> green streak. And yeah, it's, it's, it, and the, the sound is amazing. It's, not a whole lot of sound muffling going on for that V8. No. So I, I, I'm i pretty sure your neighbor's going to know every time you crank this thing yeah. up. So. She's like a, it, this car's like a German Eleanor. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's kind of a muscle car fastback. It's got that Mustangy kind of feel, but in a very German or slightly Italian way. And um, yeah, so I think it's going to be a really neat thing to have. And yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah, I think that's the understatement. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, the other side of this, I've always wanted to import a car with Jamie or it was probably just a matter of time before, you know, that happened. I was kind of waiting for space in the garage, still not space in the garage. We'll have to figure that out when this thing shows up. But when, when, you know, when something like this calls, you just sort of seize the day and go after it. And that's, that's what well, happened. George, I would gladly throw all my cars out of the garage to store this one for you. So thank you, Bill. That's super selfless. Of you're you. very well. I, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, I hope, I don't think my wife is watching, but you know, <laughs> she'll understand. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so that's kind of the found of the day. Uh, of the day. Yeah. And, and I think next we'll move on to the part of the show where we're just going to, there's not much going on right now event wise, but it's, it's worth, um, it's worth talking about uh, the events that are going on. Of course, we had news that broke on this show, right? We've got the um, caffeine and octane caffeine and octane Mall. Pr perimeter mall Sunday. Sunday. APR will have a display and that car will be uh, there in part of that display. So if you want to see an RS6 in the US, that's kind of hard to do unless you catch one in an Audi test uh, location that's um, yeah, you can have to find APRs. Now you can swing by the their headquarters and hope it's not back in the shop or they're pulling parts off, but it looks like they've, they've got it together for the weekend. Uh, and then the other thing going on this speaking of this weekend is uh, IMSA's their season starting. They're going back to Daytona. And uh, though we showed up a, a picture uh, on Instagram yesterday of one of the, um, the W, I believe it was the WRT Canada car mm -hmm. uh, that was at Daytona, the full weather tech season is going to be hard point and uh, it's going to be driven by uh, Spencer Pompelli and Rob Ferriel. And uh, so they'll be racing this weekend uh, at Daytona, I believe on be Saturday, July 4th when they're racing. Uh, Broadcast will start on IMSA.tv at 1.55 p.m. to 3 p.m. And then it's 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It'll be on NBC Sports Network, 6.10 p.m. to 8.50 p.m. on Track Pass, uh, and 6.10 p.m. to 8.50 p.m. on IMSA.tv. So if you want to catch the bulk of it, I'm going to guess the, the 1.55 to 3 o'clock is probably qualifying or some sort of feeder, uh, and then 6 uh, the, the NBC Sports Network is the one to catch 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. All those times are Eastern time. Um, so look forward to seeing them back at Daytona. Uh, and then more to come also in NASA. There's some stuff going on. There's some of the news with 
uh, NGP and and uh, yes, they're racing next week, aren't they? Is it that's the following weekend, correct? Yeah, the following weekend, yep. And, uh, and that's they'll be running two cars. Um, let's see here, the, the both cars that are hosted out of NGP. So Vinny's uh, Vinny's RS3 and then um, Audi Sport Customer Racing uh, USA manager Tristan Herbert will be running the NGP car, which is interesting because I, I know Tristan races. Uh, but that'll be the first time I think I've seen him campaigning in a in a series event in uh, one of his own products, if you will. Yeah, right. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Go ahead. Any other events going on? Uh, well, one chapter event actually is going on this weekend. It's our Eastern Canada. Our Eastern Canada chapter is running a cruise through Ontario. Um, it just happens to be on July 4th. Obviously, they do not celebrate the 4th of July. <laughs> so to them, it's just... It's just a run on a weekend. It's just the, the it's July just 4th. A, you know, it's exactly. It's just a run that happens to happen on July 4th. Uh, so they're they're going to be running run out and about. Carolina's group is going to actually be heading over to the Tell of the Dragon. Um, our Potomac group is going to be uh, running there. This is an event that they run every year called uh, Shakes and Breaks. And if you were with us at the Audi Club Nationals, uh, hosted by Potomac chapter last year, uh, we did a version of that run, which is pretty cool. You know, uh, obviously everybody's going to be following the COVID guidelines that we have put out and they're going to uh, follow their uh, local and state uh, guidelines and regulations for event holding. So I think that's a wrap, Bill. This is uh, not the long excruciating watch people make dumb jokes kind of uh, find of the day thing. So uh, I want to thank everybody for kind of taking part in our, our first official uh, news and events roundup. We hope to make this a weekly occurrence. We may fine tune the time. We started today at 2.30 to accommodate uh, our good friends from APR who were kind enough to join. But we'll look for this shortly. I, I think it'll probably stay um, available on our Facebook page and we'll be putting it on the YouTube channel soon too. Yeah, so everybody have a happy and safe fourth. Uh, and our, for our Canadian friends, have a great drive on a on just a regular weekend. Right. And for Talia, who happens to be taking the RS6 to Caffeine and Octane this weekend, we're super jealous. Uh, <laughs> have fun. And for everybody who checks that out. I'm yeah, let us know. Uh, take yeah. pictures. Let us know. Tag us in it. Yeah, Audi Club NA. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, guys.